when you talk about the impact, it's actually mostly psychological. Yes, there are the economic savings. Yes, there are the health benefits. But imagine just like going home, <laughs> like we all do, turn on a light. It's really just about having a life where energy is in the background. So we start with small solar lanterns. Um, that just provide a point of light, can allow someone to charge a phone eventually. Um, then we have small solar home systems that are going to light up a few houses, um, also in a similar way, charge a few phones, maybe power a small appliance. Um, and some of the biggest ones might even be able to power a very power efficient TV um, or a fan as well. Africa where most people are using kerosene and they're still using stopgap stop gap technologies like um, cheap like torch lights. Um, they're walking to what we call telecenters or mobile kiosks to charge their phones and then they go to like these public um, cinemas to watch football games. So people are still living their lives. It's just really um, inconvenient and difficult to access the kinds of things that we take for granted I think in, in the rest of the world. And then when you think about the financial impact, suddenly you're visible, right? So a lot of people are invisible, not because they're in the dark, but because there's no information or data on them. And so these are customers that, you know, if they go into a bank, the bank was like, oh, you're poor, you know? And so there's just this like label on them and they have no assets. Um, so now they have an asset, they're visible, we have their payment data, and they have all the psychological freedom to invest in their family and their children's future. So that's, that's the big impact. very reliable like normal electricity to having like blackouts right and suddenly you're like oh wait I can't do all the things that I need to want to do and it was like around the time of my high school exams and so you know I was studying by candlelight you know on, on some nights and so I think that was in the back of my mind um, and then I went to study energy at Columbia because you know I realized you can't talk about wide-scale development on the African continent until you fix the energy problem um, and just the scale of the problem 600 million Africans without power. Our vision is um, of a West Africa where energy is affordable and accessible to all, energy and financial inclusion, um, as well as life transforming products. So the energy side of things, we plan on expanding um, access to energy across Sierra Leone and then Liberia where we've actually just started operations um, for a few months. Um, and then Guinea is also uh, a market that we're looking at.